Hey guys, Crypto Dad back again. We're almost done with the formatting of the encrypted internal solid state drive. So I'm going to take you over there. Joining me, this is a part two. Okay, so it finished. All right. So uh, we started with this uh, before, and it looks like I've tapped my camera. Bad. Okay. Put that back where it belonged. Okay, so it formatted the uh, encrypted solid state drive, the encrypted partition, and so we've wiped the entire drive clean of any previous data. Uh, this is a very strong encryption. Now it wants the encrypted passphrase. So like we talked about before, this needs to be very long and very complicated. Uh, so uh, we're going to go ahead and enter it now. Let's hope I did this one right. Okay. So that was a pretty long password, passphrase, and uh, we want it to be something that we can remember. Uh, but it's hard to guess. We went through all that before. Okay. So here we go. We've got the dr the encrypted drive is ready to go. Um, now the the last few things that we need to do uh, are we need to make sure that see we've got the boot partition here, but we need a root partition. Did I do that? Did I really do that? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> got scared there for a minute. Okay, so we need to configure the logical volume manager. Okay, so that's the next step. After we've got the encrypted drive created, we're going to use the uh, volume man logical volume manager to uh, create our partitions and everything. So sorry. <laughs> so we hit enter. We say yes. Okay. Now, uh, so here we go. Uh, we want to create a volume group. That's our first step. We can call it anything we want. We can call it, I'm going to call mine Debian VG. We could just call it VG if you want, or uh, Pink Elephants, whatever floats your boat. Okay, now here are the two drives that we can act upon. We're going to hit the space bar to put the star uh, on the encrypted drive. I'm going to hit tab to get over to continue. We'll hit enter. And now we've got our volume group. We need to create the two logical volumes on that volume group. Create logical volume. On the, the that's the only one there. So we hit enter. And we're going to call this guy root. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to create a swap partition. And the, uh, you know, rule of thumb is the swap partition should be as large as your uh, internal um, memory. So this particular laptop has 24 gigabytes of RAM. So I want the swap partition to be at least 24. Um, so I'm going to subtract 24 from 256. I'm just going to use the arrow key to get over here. Backspace, backspace, and it's going to be 232. And then I'll hit enter. OK, and then I'm going to create one more logical volume with enter. And it's going to be on that same uh, volume group. Enter again. This one is called swap one. We'll hit enter. OK, and then uh, the default is the remaining space left on that drive. Uh, so the 24 gigabytes. We'll hit enter again. And we're done. We'll hit finish here. Okay, now we're back to this screen, and this was where I got a little verklempt a, a minute earlier. We need to set up uh, these partitions now. So we got our boot here on the flash drive, but the main drive, the encrypted drive, needs to be our root. So we highlight the drive, uh, the partition, 
and we hit enter and we're going to use as x4 which is the most modern file system and we're going to choose our mount point as root it's the first choice just hit enter okay everything else we can leave the same hit done now we go down here to this 24 gigabytes that I had left over we hit enter and we're going to use this as the swap area wasn't that easy done setting up the partition now we've got our root we've got our swap and then we've got our boot on a separate flash drive finish partitioning and write changes to disk all right, it's gonna just uh, you know eyeball it one more time and see that we've got two uh, logical volumes on this one volume group, uh, one as ext4, one as swap. They're called root and swap one. And yes, everything looks good to me, so I'm gonna hit yes and enter. Okay, now we're installing the base system. Okay, it's uh, doing the initial installation of the operating system on this encrypted uh, solid state drive. Now, uh, this is going to be a great foundation for your uh, stealth computing. Okay, once we get this installed on this uh, solid state drive and this laptop, we're going to reboot, we're going to be in Debian okay we're going to be in the Linux operating system now uh, I might do another whole video on why it's a bad idea to use Windows 10 if you're really considered con concerned about privacy because Windows 10 um, has all sorts of privacy issues uh, it sends data back to Microsoft uh, all types of data and if you're trying to use uh, a browser tor there are so many um, ways that you could inadvertently send information over the internet uh, incidentally through different ports or, or different types of things beyond the browser you know you might download a file and uh, you know you open that file and it can communicate to the internet uh, without your knowledge so there's a lot of holes in trying to set up a privacy system on a Windows 10 machine so Linux is a little difficult to deal with as you can see the installation is a bit cryptic it's not very user-friendly you know if you've ever installed Windows it's like a piece of cake it's it's practically your best friend telling you you know here's what you do next but uh, this is a little more involved, and that's why I'm doing this video to help you get this guy installed. All right, so we're going to stick with our defaults here. Uh, I'm going to stick with the uh, default mirror here. Uh, HTTP proxy, we don't need that. We can leave it blank and hit enter. Okay, now this is the point where it goes out and gets all of the latest packages and software for uh, the Debian installation. Um, I think maybe we talked about that before when we did the download and verification of the Debian uh, originally. We had the option of downloading all of these multiple CDs that we could have used to install Debian maybe in an environment where we weren't connected to the internet, although that is becoming rarer and rarer. I mean, you hear a lot of talk about well, if you don't have an internet connection, do X. Well, um, just about everybody has an internet connection. I'm not going to participate in the survey. Um, not that I'm, I'm just like, I'm not ready to provide them information about what I'm doing. And I don't want to add a level of complexity to the, my operating system. Uh, I love the Debian guys and I highly encourage you to uh, donate to them. But I tend to avoid um, transmitting information uh, Okay, I like the GNOME desktop. I'm going to choose GNOME. I think maybe there were some other guides where they might give you a different one. We hit tab and we'll hit continue. If, I mean, if you're a little more uh, adept at Linux, you may have been doing some of those other things. Although 
this stealth machine, I probably wouldn't recommend it using it as some kind of FTP or web server or anything else by that nature. This is strictly a workstation setup. Okay. Um, all right. Now this this last uh, bit might take a while. It's going to go uh, onto the um, mirrors and download quite a bit of software. So uh, I might talk to you for a few more minutes, but I have a sinking feeling that this process takes 20 or 30 minutes too. I believe I've been through this multiple times and it's probably a good idea to end the video at this point. And uh, boy, that, that my third video is gonna be pretty short, but uh, I'm not gonna have you uh, step uh, wait through all of this okay so let's see here yeah I think I'm gonna sign off for now while this uh, installation finishes up pulling down all this information from the mirrors um, I hope you like this video I hope you're following along um, I felt it was a necessary step to walk you through this installation because there's a lot of videos that I can do after the fact, you know, there's, I was thinking about it and I said, okay, now that you've got Debian installed, we can do this, we can do that. I can show you how to set up the VPN. I can show you how to set up uh, the, the Hunix system, uh, proxies, all that fun stuff. But without this video of showing you how to do the installation, uh, there wasn't, uh, I just felt like it was, it needed to be done. So uh, I hope you liked it. I hope you stick with me uh, for the next video, which will be kind of the wrap up, the follow up to finish up the installation. And uh, subscribe if you want to. Uh, I hope to see you again.